Hiya folks, today we're going to learn how to control the Lulzbot Mini with a Raspberry Pi. And welcome back! So, I've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up and I've got it connected to the Lulzbot Mini. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi is hooked up here. It's got an Ethernet cable going to the router a USB connector going to the Lulzbot and power. And that's what we've got hooked up. I'm going to show you in a little while how to actually set that up. But I want to show you that I can control this straight from smartphone. And I'll put a picture up here so you can see it. Maybe up here, we'll see. Uh, but I can actually control it, move the head around. I'm going to put my hand over here so you can see I'm tapping it. Move the the tray, move the height, and set it to home. Now I'm doing this on uh, an old version of the uh, Samsung Galaxy S4 because my iPhone 6S Plus is actually what's filming this right now in 4K, which is allowing me to zoom in on all of this. Uh, but that's an interesting thing because this is an old out of service device that I could conceivably just keep right here and use as a control structure for this uh, Lulzbot Mini. This is really cool. I'm going to show you in a couple minutes how to hook it up, but we are talking about a total of 54 bucks invested in the Raspberry Pi and the power supply and the heat sink and all of that. Uh, and we've put a mobile controllable brain on an inexpensive 3D printer. And the, the interesting thing is, is that this applies not just to the Lulzbot Mini, but it applies to any 3D printer you get that comes without a display like the display that's on the, uh, the MakerBot. Something that comes without an onboard computer to manage it all. So this is really pretty cool stuff. Uh, since it is 98 degrees outside, and even though my uh, mini split air conditioner is working overtime, I am going to adjourn to my desk and I will show you how to set all of this stuff up. And we're back this time at my desk and thankfully it's a lot cooler in here. Wow, it was hot in the garage. Anyway, this is Octoprint. This is what makes the magic happen. And as you can see, it's at octoprint.org. We're gonna go through and set this up. I'm also gonna include a link to some helpful videos uh, by some of the YouTubers out there who have walked through some of this as well. So uh, you'll not only have this, but you'll have those links. They will be in the description below and in the main ZDNet article. I am showing you this through screenshots instead of through the actual normal interaction for a particular reason. As I was setting this up, I realized that there was just a tremendous amount of personal information uh, that became visible in the various parts of the operating system that I was digging up, including confidential client work and things like that. And I just could not make that something that showed up in the video. So instead, what we're doing is we're just running through a set of screenshots to show you the basics, uh, and that'll get you started, and that will also protect the people I work with. So octoprint.org is really interesting because it does provide you basically a web interface for the printer. And in a couple minutes, we'll actually take a look at that uh, and start something printing. Um, so the first thing you do is you're going to hit the download button, which will bring you here, and you're going to be downloading OctoPi. And if you're using a Raspberry Pi, this is really convenient because the OctoPi uh, distribution is a Raspbian, which is a Debian-based Linux distribution that's all pre-set up and ready to go. So all you do is, well, pretty set up and ready to go as much as any um, Linux distribution is. There's always a little bit of fiddling. Uh, so what you're going to do, whoops, let's go back here, there we go, is you're going to download OctoPi to your computer. Now I'm doing this on a Mac. Uh, this works just as well on, on Windows and Linux. Um, and then once you downloaded the, the distribution, which you can see I did here, um, then the next thing is to put the image file onto an SD card. And I uh, had a little tiny SD card that I picked up for, I think it was $8, um, that became part of, of this thing. Um, so I clicked here 
like any other Raspberry Pi image, which takes you to uh, the Raspberry Pi site, and it's got some great instructions. Um, the best thing to do with those is to just click the guide for your OS. So I did, I clicked for Mac OS, and I got this set of instructions. Now there is a little bit of command line interaction here. It's not terribly bad, so you know I think you probably can handle it. If not, there are probably other ways to, to get this. In fact, there are some pre-built uh, Raspberry Pi and OctoPi distributions that you can buy uh, all pre-built, but I went the install it my way way. So I followed the first step, which was to click on more information and then get a system report, which gave me the ID for the um, SD card reader. And so, whoops, let's again go back, there we go. Uh, and that told me that the SD card uh, reader was disk 5. So I then also needed to format uh, the SD card, which I went ahead and did. Um, I'm always a little nervous about some of these things because this is tied to the rest of my computer. So really you want to carefully look at it. And, and the first thing that you'll need to do after you, uh, you format it is you're going to need to make sure you unmount it. Uh, and that way you have an unmounted version that you're then able to execute the commands on. And then there's a couple of commands, which I'll try to get this to scroll down for. There we go. Uh, you've got a dd command. And um, actually, there's actually only one command, really, is you're going to need to do um, a disk duplicate command, which is essentially moving the image. So if you look at it, you've got dd. Um, the input file, which is this long image file, and the output file, which is the disk. And you run that, and in my case I sat here a little uncomfortably for a few minutes because it took three or four minutes before it came back with the right answer. Uh, as I was thinking, oh my gosh, I've just written an image file to my you know my main drive or something and I always get that way whenever I do something like this but I double check and triple check and quadruple check first so you should do the same thing so when that process was done I then transferred I pulled the SD card out of my Mac uh, brought it over to the Raspberry Pi plugged it into the Raspberry Pi booted up the the, um, the low spot mini and the Pi uh, gave it a couple minutes, wandered back over to my Mac, opened up my web browser, and uh, went to octopi.local, or https colon slash slash octopi.local, and got a starting sign-up screen. Now, one of the things that you may need to do is you might need to um, be running Apple's Bonjour for octopi.local to work. If not, you'll have to find out what the IP address is of your Raspberry Pi, but either way, you're in. Uh, so here's, this is an interesting setup step where you basically need to set up and configure your access control, and you probably should do the same thing uh, via shell into your Raspberry Pi just to make sure that you have a unique username and password. So once all of that was done, uh, I was up and running. So let's take a quick look at the web interface for OctoPi. Here you go. And this is actually connected in uh, to the OctoPi, and I have an ABS um, uh, bottom of the uh, of, of an actual case for the Raspberry Pi, which will be next week's discussion, which is the many variants of cases I attempted to do to make this work. I'm going to start printing here, so it is starting its process, and it's basically sending the G code over. Actually, in this case, because it's here. The G code has already been uploaded. I can actually drag and drop, and you can too, the, the G code right into here or hit the upload button. Uh, but we'll give it a minute to, uh, to get itself together as it, as it starts up. Uh, but basically, you've got a web interface, and you're able to do an awful lot with it. Um, there's a similar control structure to the control structure I showed you earlier. Um, it's temperature, which I'm not seeing just yet. Uh, there's actually a terminal and view area. There we go. Whoops, let's go back. Let's close this a second. So what you're seeing is, is now you're seeing that it's actually coming up to speed in terms of temperature. Uh, the control thing here, 
um, is the same set of buttons I used before. This is for a camera which I have not hooked up or configured. I've found that sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't, but there's no camera in there. Um, and as you can see here, this line is moving up, which is showing the temperature of the hot end beginning to heat up. And after a little while, you'll also see the bed heat up because ABS requires both a warm bed and a warm hot end. There's a joke in there somewhere, which I'm just going to let go. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the settings for Octoprint. One of the things that's quite interesting is that um, Octoprint does support a webcam, which will be a, a future project. Um, it also supports plugins, and so you can add a variety of plugins. I added, it came with the Cura engine. Cura is the slicer that works with the Lulzbot. Um, and I added Touch UI, which is the ability to um, create, uh, to, to control this thing with a, a nice user interface on my phone. It's basically a, a, um, a responsive web page that is mobile friendly. And it works really well. And then you can add tons of new additional plugins, uh, which do an awful lot. And we'll probably explore those over uh, ensuing weeks and months as we get to know this. So there you go. Now, as you can see, the bed is heated up. Uh, the hot end is almost ready to print. Uh, and we don't have anything actually printed yet, but it thinks it's got about 2 hours and 27 minutes to do the printing and it's fully under control from my computer. I can also, again, I, as I showed you earlier, I can go in and monitor and control this thing from a smartphone. Um, so it's, it's a pretty capable thing, and if you realize that all of this capability was added for a total of a $54 investment, it's, it's pretty amazing. So uh, with that, have yourself a great day. Take a look at the resources, because I am pointing you to some really good uh, links that will take you through a little bit more about OctoPi and OctoPrint. Uh, and I will see you next time. Go ahead and subscribe to that little subscribe button down in the lower right corner. And thank you very much for DIY IT's 3D printing discovery series on ZDNet. My name is David Gortz.